today's video we'll look at how to design a frame corner in detail using solid steel for Creo Elements direct modeling. I have already placed the required beams here. A frame corner is formed at a beam that rests on the right side of the column flange and the other beam is connected using an end plate. The frame corner tool is the right mate for our first task. With the help of the menu we first define the column and then the beam. This is done by simply clicking on the profiles. We immediately get a preview. As you can see the frame corner tool creates a complete connection including end plate, haunch, ribs and the cover plate on the column. The dimensions can of course be freely defined. Let's make the frame corner a little bigger. This is then also been shown directly in the preview. There are also other variants for frame corners available which can be selected by clicking on variants but I'll stick with variant 1 for now. To add the bolting I activate the corresponding checkbox and open the component selection dialog. Here a complete bolting is already configured, but I delete it to show how easy any screw connection can be defined. On the left side the screw parameters like shape, standard, diameter etc. can be set. A click on add and the screw also appears in the preview on the right side. The two other tabs are for defining washers and nuts, which we could now add in exactly the same way. However, this can also be done more quickly by simply clicking on default mountings. This will add two washers and a nut matching the selected standard of the bolt and also the clamping length. Just confirm and the bolting is fully defined. To preview the bolts we would need to activate the checkbox here below. I don't do that now because we are ready to confirm the whole frame corner anyway. The computer then calculates for about 4 seconds. I think that's fairly fast for inserting the complete frame corner including the bolting. Well, this looks like a nicely detailed frame corner. Let's move on to the second beam. Here we use the end plate connection tool. The method is exactly the same as before, simply define the column and the beam by clicking on them. Solid Steel recognized that for these beam sizes the connection at the web of the column as well as via an additional plate at the flanges would be possible. I select the connection at the web and then choose the site on which the end plate should be placed in the next pop-up menu. The third and last pop-up menu asks if the overlap of the column and the beam should just be cut or removed. Remove is the correct choice here and since standard plate was activated the selection for dust end plates opens. I choose the first entry with 60mm bolting which suits this non-bending resistant end plate connection and the preview appears. We could now define the bolts via the part selection as we just did with the frame corner. But we can see here that the correct bolting is selected and that the 70mm borehole diameter also fits, so we can simply confirm. This is very fast and the connection is finished, but I think we should add some ribs here. For this we use the ribs tool. We select the profile to which we want to add the ribs, get the preview and the menu for defining the ribs opens. The sheet thickness of 10mm fits. The size was automatically defined based on the profile of the column and down here we can select how we like the shape of the corners to be. I'll stick with the chamfered variant. For the extrusion direction, I specify that it should be extruded downwards relative to the sketch plane. This makes the later placement easier. Now we only have to move the rib to match this face of the profile. The second rib is placed in the same manner. Confirm and this detail is also done. Finally, I'd like to add an end plate here at the bottom of the column. The height of these is often forgotten when placing the columns. But we'll see in a moment that solid steel gives us the ability to shorten the column in one step with the placement of the end plate. End plates is the tool of choice. We simply select the end face of the column as reference face and then get a preview as a sketch. This one fits for me. Otherwise we could edit the geometry in this menu or simply select the fitting end plate from the drop down menu. Now we select our column at shorten. This way solid steel will perform a cut for us and the height including the end plate will remain as planned. Then we turn the direction so that the plate is extruded upwards in the direction of the arrow. Next we just have to confirm and this point of our demo assembly is also finished. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video feel free to click like or subscribe to the channel. For more information visit our website. Thank you for watching and see you next time.